Hey, all you cool cats. Ready for a little fun? <laughs> That's what I thought. Pop talk. Scooby doo wah doo wah. Pop talk. The fun never stops, you know. Pop talk. If you're a nerd or a jock, run, don't just walk. You ready to rock? You got pop talk. Now from Funko Hollywood, it's time for pop talk. Hey everybody, it's your pal Funmaker Mike. We're here for another episode of Pop Talk. You know him from the Backstreet Boys. We have... No, no. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, you've, you've, you've chock full of... No, no, keep rolling. You have to keep that. Yeah, we should. You have to we keep should. that. We should. Let's keep it. You have to keep that. No, no. No, because you, totally, you, you I were, almost said One Direction. You know, One Direction. Yeah, yeah we got we to gotta make sure he knows. There we go. Now you can't forget. Because it'll happen again. Has it ever happened before, though? Ever? Never. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, hey, everybody. This is take two. I'm still fun maker no, Mike no. here. No, I'm going to step all over that. Because we've already done the interaction. All you, right. You... It's normally, it's new kids you know, on the block. it's normally I just a, kidding. a younger, you know, demo that confuses us. You're more our demo. That's why I'm insulted. So I'm not. Thank you. We're proud to be here. Wow. All I'll right. Make, I, we won't tell the rest of the new kids that you confuse us with Backstreet. I love the Backstreet Boys. I love NSYNC. I love all boy bands. We're good people and we're good for the world. And I'm happy to be here. How do you see... All those boy bands you just mentioned, yeah. how you influenced? Well, it's nice to be a part of the conversation, right? I mean, that's all you can really hope for. And, and every group has their own story. And I know that, you know, we like to put everything in boxes and it's, it's like sports almost. You know what I mean? It's, and, it's, and it's fun to have those conversations. BTS, for instance, you know, my son who just turned 15 is obsessed with BTS. And we met them at the American Music Awards. And you know, they were like, legends, you know, they saw us and we took a big picture and it's lovely to, you know, be a part of that, you know, that long history of, of boy band music and pop music. And we've worked with the Backstreet Boys, uh, you know, I'm buddies with the, uh, all the guys from NSYNC and yeah, it's nice. But you guys were really the first. Ish, I mean, I, I think, you know, they sort of retroactively coined the phrase boy band and they, they, some people said we were the first, you know, without New Edition, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been around. You right. know what I mean? Okay. Those guys are our heroes. They came from our hometown, you know, without the Jackson 5, without right. the Osmonds and on and on and on yeah. and on. And, 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 we, and we sort of evolved like that. But, um, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very cool. I think, I think overall, you know, when we came up, we might have t took a, a few more hits than these guys do now because we were much more critical, you know what I mean? We were much more, you know, genres were in their box, you know, rock guys didn't like us and, you know, we had to stick with our own kind and all that. Now, we're much more like, it's a, it's a big melting pot. But, um, you know, I think it's just nice that we're celebrated for, for what we bring to the table. And, and it's, it's very cool to see that um, there's no, you know, expiration date on boy bands, you know. This show is called Pop Talk. During, while we, I ask you these hardball questions, um, you can, uh, you can build a pop. I'm start it can crying, be, making my, uh, my, okay, go ahead. Yeah, just build a pop. Just go for yeah, it. Yeah, have fun. It can be whatever now, you want. The, 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 oh. Oh, look at that. Now you won't forget. But you got to put nukes on the block there, yeah. too, because they'll forget. <laughs> Just, I was just kidding, by the I way. Bet, that was I, all just, just... It was all, yeah, it was all shtick. Now, I bet some people get very serious about what they pick. Yeah. And then some people don't even think about it. Oh, no, we've had everything. I mean, we had Somewhere one guy. We had, you know who Joe McHale is? Yes, comedian? very funny all guy. All he did was build hair. Hair. Yeah, just hair. I love it. Okay, here we go. You know, Funko is a collectibles company. What do you, Joey McIntyre, collect? Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do I collect? It's it's sometimes it, during interviews I, I just feel very boring. You know what I mean? I don't. You know, I'm I'm pretty 
pretty simple guy. I, I love to perform and I, and in between I love to relax, which means I like to take walks, but um, I love, I love to sing songs. So I guess they're not in a box and they're not, you know, written down, but they're definitely, it sounds corny, but like, you know, accumulating that lifelong songbook, I guess. Were you confident in auditioning, in auditioning for your spot in New Kids on the Block? Yeah, very good. You were, um, only, you were only 12. I right? was only 12. Was I confident? I wasn't, I wasn't super scared. I mean, it was a very unceremonious um, kind of deal. You know, you'd think big boy band, oh, it must have been a cattle call. It must have been, you know, the 80s version of American Idol. It really wasn't. I think there was a total of eight guys over the span of the group in the beginning that, that auditioned. Um, and really, initially, Donnie met Maurice Starr, the producer who had the idea. And Donnie was the guy who had to go out and recruit Jordan and John, who were, they all went to school together and they sung in the choir. He said, maybe the, those guys will do it. And maybe Danny, my buddy who break dances and you know performs will want to do it. And they kind of cobbled together a bunch of neighborhood guys. And then I was a couple of towns over doing theater, doing you know a couple of music groups, but nothing pop and nothing professional. But I, I do remember the day, and we all have the same story. We went and, and met Maury Starr and third floor of this dilapidated brick building in the in the hood, so to speak. And um, he was a nice guy, but I sang a Nat King Cole song for him. So I, I sang, I went with what was comfortable. And um, and I, I used to listen to all the standards driving around with my dad. And so I sang that and he said, I think you'll do. Wow. <laughs> yeah. In the next week, I was in a studio recording a record, so that was that was pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah. What what like going back? What is your biggest personal takeaway from your early from the early career? Like, do you look back now? Do you have anything like words of wisdom, or what would you go back and say to your young self? Yeah, or? I'm just grateful that you know we were all working class kids in Boston, you know, and um, you know our parents were from a generation that worked hard, and you know. You didn't take anything for granted, and I think that grit was part of our story. So that's that's what kind of comes up from them. Did being in a boy band present obstacles later on? You know, when you went into trying to do other things, where you kind of feel like you were like pigeonholed, like, hey, this is like everybody just sees me as. I think I think there was definitely a a desire to make it on your own and and separate yourself from what that was. Um, and I think that's a part of life, no matter, I think, what situation you are. If you're from a different business or a high school or college, you're coming out, you want to kind of do it your own way, for better or for worse. And, and I was able to do that, but I think certainly, especially, again, I think it's changed a little bit. But in that era, <clears throat> and coming from such a huge success, you, you just kind of pigeonholed. And it, it feels like it takes longer to, you know, tread that path of saying, I am my own person. And, and looking back, I was able to do that. And I had a solo album and it was a top 10 hit. And, you know, I toured a lot. I think that you could be Did Broadway and, but in my mind, it took me a while to realize that I, I could have both, you know? It, and, and other people's perceptions are theirs, and it's really about what's going on in my head, and, and I think I was able to, but it takes time. It takes time to celebrate both, and I'm grateful that I'm at that place where I can do that. You've had extensive, extensive theater work, and it says you played Fonzie in the Happy Days. Yeah. You know, and we had Henry Winkler here. Ah, oh, he's the best. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. Tell us how that whole thing came about. Well, I was, so Gary Marshall, who directed and created Happy Days, and right. he's directed a lot of TV, like The Odd Couple, he's just yeah. unbelievable. He's, he's, rest in peace, but he was a gem. So to be able to, growing up, I was like three or four when Happy Days happened. I had like a little cassette tape with my sister taping me, you know, doing a Fonzie, you know, imitation. And um, so to work with a legend, and Gary was, so he was, it was like having a master class in, in comedy and theater and um, to work with him, you know, for 
the better part of a year, you know, doing that role and playing an iconic character like like the Fonz on a you know on stage was was everything, and 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 he's the best. And I was able to, um, I I think I might have um, met Henry along the way, but Henry was nice enough to like just sit with me for a little while and talk about the character. And you know, we think he's he's such. He can be like a cliche because the Fonz is so big, but like he was really talked about how it was tied to real things, you know, to keep him grounded in his own way. And and um, yeah, it was it was it was a super cool experience. We've been talking a lot about that with other guests about what you measure success, what was success. Does it have to be a f financial measuring stick, or is it like for you that might have been that, you might consider that one of your greatest successes? Absolutely. Because of who you got to work with and Absolutely. what you got to learn. And, and the things that we learn from those are, are something that we can carry with us to the, to the next, next project, thing. right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. What, what fuels your creativity? You know, I know that I have to challenge myself. I know I have to put myself on the line. I know I have to be uncomfortable, yep. you know, uh, to, to grow as an artist. I know I have to be a little worried and a little concerned about the, you know, that show or that role or that thing that I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I played Carnegie Hall this year and, and, and that kind of an experience, I mean, <laughs> the bar is high and you could easily tell yourself like, who do you think you are playing Carnegie Hall, mm -hmm. you know? And it's kind of cool because I think you want to ride that, you know, the balance between am I good enough and also going, damn right I'm good enough, you know? And that's kind of what gets my juices flowing and it's just fun. You know, it's, it's, you know, being an artist and being a performer, it's not, it's not always steady. You know, it's not, you know, clocking in and out. Um, but I know I'm grateful and I, and I know I'm lucky to have this kind of a career. When, when you started, there was little to know. There wasn't social media. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, texting and Instagram and all that <sighs> stuff. Uh, What's your take on it? I mean, what, how do you, you know, feel about it? You know, I've, I've always been one to think that I, you know, give me the good old days, you know yep. what I mean? Give me the good old days, you know what I mean? Curate sure. the hell out of it, I don't care. I only, there was only 10 videos and five songs I could hear, great. That was awesome, you know what I mean? Like, I get that you're like, you can choose what you want. Like, everything's out there. Like, I don't know, I just, growing up in the 80s was like, it was great, you know what I mean? It was just like, it was enough for me, you know? Um, you know, having three channels on the TV. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my kids, you know, hate when I'd say that. I know, Dad, there were only three channels, you know? Um, and then, you know, when they ask the group that, I'm, I'm usually the lone voice because everybody, mostly says, man, what's, what's better than like direct from artist to their fans? Like there's no filter. It, you can get a hold of millions of people sometimes, you know what I mean? But even if it's 10,000 or 5,000 or 100,000, like that power there is like incredible. And that has been a huge part of our, you know, resurgent, resurgence in the last 10 years. So it's a tough question, but if I had to choose, I'd say, the good old days. Hey, I hear you. I believe it too. I just sometimes think it's just too much, too fast, too many. It just feels overwhelming. And uh, I, like, it seemed like even with music, I, I hear most of the music I hear are, are, are remakes. Yeah, the songs have to be two minutes now because the, the attention span is, is too fast. And, and the whole testing, it's all about testing. On Spotify, they know when someone stops a song. They know when someone moves a song. Right. So if that song is two minutes instead of three minutes or three and a half minutes, it has a better chance of getting played all the way through. That being said, the Beatles made two minute songs. So it depends on how you look at it. Maybe that makes, you know, pop music better. Um, yeah, and, and screen, I got three kids, so don't get me started about screens. All right, so what we're gonna do here is, is do a little bit of rapid fire fun. Okay. You ready? I'm still, this is, by the way, this is as far as I got. Oh yeah, you better get working. Yeah. I think I'm making the fonts. It's getting there, yeah, fonts with I'm eyelashes. Fon <laughs> Fonzie. 
What's your favorite cartoon growing up as a kid? Oh, gotta go classic with the, the Roadrunner. What was the first music you actually bought with your own money? My first 45 was We're Not Gonna Take It. I don't know when the last time I saw him, because Donnie did an homage to him in our last video. He, he dressed up as Dee, and we were, we were all Twisted Sister. Uh, but yeah, we're not gonna take it. 45, that was my, yeah. that was it. Yeah. Wow. Man. What's your, what is your favorite all-time song? I always, I kind of say if I had one song to sing, it's uh, All The Way by Frank Sinatra. All the way, happy to be near. Um, hey, this is off a little bit off this question, but who was the most like influ influential person in your life? Would in you say my life? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's weird. who had the most influence on my life? I'd have to say my dad, which feels different than influential, you know. But you know, I, I think about my dad a lot more. Uh, he passed away about five years ago. I had a great life. He was 87. And, but um, especially as a dad and as I get older, you know, mm -hmm. I'm turning 50 this year. And he always said, you know, uh, we talked, I asked him one time, what was his best age? He said 50. Oh, wow. You know, so I'm probably, it makes sense that I'm kind of like thinking about that a lot. Hey, is there a place that you've always wanted to go to, to travel to, but you haven't yet? Croatia, I hear that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I haven't, haven't been there, yeah. What was, what was the first car you ever had? First car is, well, we did a deal with, um, you remember Suzuki Sidekicks? Yeah, there were those absolutely. Those little tinny Jeep things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we did like- They flipped over. Exactly, they yeah. weren't the safest things in the world. And I think our manager was like, hey, if you sign autographs at this dealership for an hour, They'll let you have, you know, you know, sidekicks for like a month. Cause we had no time off, but we had a month off and they got us all cars. And I think most of us bought them. So Suzuki sidekick and then um, uh, a Mercedes coupe. What's the best childhood gift you ever received? You'll appreciate this. Uh, remember the Charlie McCarthy dolls? Yeah. The ventriloquist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got one of those. I don't know why I was, for my sixth birthday, I don't know why I was obsessed with that. I think some guy on TV was, you know, he was on TV all the time with one of those. And i never forget, like, I asked for it and I can see, you know, my mom coming through the door with him and just me lighting up. So, yeah. Favorite movie of all time? <sighs> Midnight Run. Classic. Charles Grodin, Robert yeah. De Niro. Favorite Disney ride? <laughs> The teacups. Really? Yeah. Good. No line. <laughs> you bang it out, have some cotton candy, and sit on a bench. That's, that's my idea of Disney. <laughs> so what is it like to be popped? Uh, we're thrilled. We're thrilled. Look Just like I'm, I'm sure everybody is. Yeah, it's so cool. I got my first one. It's on my kitchen counter right now. And like I told you earlier, it was very cool because, you know, we had some notes and you came back and we weren't sure how, you know, open to that you guys were going to be, but you were, and all five of us are very excited. So that hat, if, if you can see, ha has a hole in it. Yeah. I wore this iconic hat. And, yeah. And, um, and that's it. And I remember that jacket like it was yesterday and the pant and the whole thing and the holes in the, and uh, yeah. So, uh. Yeah, we're very excited. It's very, very cool to be a part of it. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, what did you create here today? What are you going to call your creation? Um, fizz. Okay. Fizz. Yeah, a little bit of a, a nod to the Fonz, but Oh, fizz. there you go. I like that. Fizz, but it's okay. cool, yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show, buddy. I, 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 we uh, we absolve you. We <laughs> yeah. absolve you. I mean, there's a lot of synergy here. There's a lot of synergy that we didn't know about. Yeah. That wraps up another edition of Pop Talk. See ya. <laughs>